I'm not saying people will not disappoint you. <laughs> I'm not saying that circumstances will not disappoint you. But as Christians, we should not be disappointed. Because our expectations are not material. Our expectations are spiritual. And God will never let us down. Disappointment does not belong in the vocabulary of the spiritually minded. Grace and peace to you all, people of God. <laughs> in the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Let us begin this time together in a moment of prayer because we know we need God's mercy and favor in each and every step we take. So let us pray together right now. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your divine mercy and favor. Son of David, have mercy on us. Let your mercy and favor speak for us in every part of this meeting today. Lord Jesus, open our hearts to receive your word, to receive revelation from your spirit and give us the grace to walk, act, move in the lights of your holy word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and the people of God said, Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Wow. Once again, everyone, I want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this first uh, partner meeting here at the new God's Heart TV studio. I want to talk today uh, in this word of encouragement about, about a spiritual principle. And I was reflecting on this particularly after I had a phone call uh, with someone, a word of counsel, and the person concerned is, is someone who, by the grace of God, has been supporting the, the ministry of God's Heart TV from a, from a financial perspective. She's been giving as God put in her heart, but was going through some particular hard times in her workplace. And... When I was speaking to her, it was clear that there was a disappointment in her tone. And she said this, she said, I don't understand why this is happening to me when I'm supporting God's work. When I'm doing this, I'm doing the right thing, but why is this happening to me? And I think this is a very common thing, a very common problem people fall into today. Not just in terms of giving to support the ministry, but even in terms of any spiritual service. Whether it's, I've prayed, I've prayed, I've prayed, and yet I'm, I'm facing this, why? Or I, I invest my time in, in volunteering for God's projects, I, I, I support the less privileged, I do this, I do that, and yet when a, a circumstance that doesn't meet my expectation unfolds, I get disappointed. Why is this happening? Because I'm doing A for God, so why is B manifesting in my life? I think it's a very common issue. And I want to warn us today about the danger of this. Because look, if the devil cannot prevent your exposure to the truth, he will attempt to twist it. To try and deceive you to misinterpret it. Think about that. The devil wants us to misinterpret spiritual things in a natural manner. You know, in, in, the, in the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ, many times you saw how our Lord Jesus rebuked his disciples because they had natural interpretation of spiritual instruction. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ would give them an instruction or tell them something and within themselves they would reason about it and conclude that it meant something natural. Whereas Jesus was referring to something spiritual. This is a very easy trap to fall into where we misinterpret a spiritual principle through a material mindset. And I remember I, I was speaking <laughs> to this, this lady and there were two points of concern with what she said and I want to share with everyone what I, what I said to her because it's a lesson, it's a lesson, it's a lesson. I told this lady that the first thing blocking your blessing is your definition of it. Because <laughs> she had already internally associated blessing from God with something measured materially. Material. It's like we, we use worldly yardsticks to measure spiritual things, godly things. It's, it's a trap. If I was to ask everyone today, okay, people of God, how do we define success? How do we define blessing? How do we define progress? It's very common for people to immediately link such words to material things. Okay, well, this person is successful because they have financial resources or this person is successful because of their position in society or, or their status or their stature it's very common for us today to link such things with material things now let me be clear <laughs> i'm not saying that such things cannot be a sign of success they certainly can be but Remember, we are in the world. We are not parts of them. We should not use worldly definitions for spiritual things. God is spirit. His reward for his children is primarily spiritual. Something that cannot be measured materially. Something that cannot be discerned naturally. If we use material measurements to define success, tell me which of the apostles in the Bible will be considered a successful person. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, pillars of faith, heroes of faith, God's generals. If we use material measurements to determine the value of success, how many of them would be classed as successful? When many of them in the natural had nothing material to boast of and even we know how many of them ended their life martyred for their faith. It's just today when we thank God for the holy record, <laughs> the word of God, we can look back at their lives and learn from their lives. But at that moment when they were given their oaths for Christ, I think many people would not look at their lives and say, well, this is a successful person. This is a blessed person. This is a prosperous person. If you use material measurements. So, going back to my points. The problem with, with what that lady expressed to me. Why, why am I facing this after I'm doing this for God? Is first of all, you are defining blessing from a carnal perspective. Okay. Blessing means that... At my workplace, there's material fruitfulness. That, that was the definition. The way God sees things is different from the way man sees things. Secondly, we must be careful not to fall into the trap of placing material expectations on spiritual investments. Sowing to the spirits and expecting visible, material manifestation. Please, I want to repeat. I'm not saying that they cannot come. 
I'm not saying it is not a sign of God's blessing. I'm not saying that, look, if you, if you follow godly principles, even in your work, your career, financial management, those godly principles will pave the way for material prosperity. But that should not be our focus. That should not be the center of our expectations. I repeat, God is spirit. The scriptures say he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But we don't have the rights to determine the way in which that reward manifests. A lot of people engage in spiritual activities, spiritual assignments, and internally have placed a material expectation on them. And what happens if the material expectation is not met they get disappointed. This is what I want to speak about today. Facing disappointment without being disappointed. I'm not saying people will not disappoint you. <laughs> I'm not saying that circumstances will not disappoint you. But as Christians, we should not be disappointed. Because our expectations are not material. Our expectations are spiritual. And God will never let us down. Disappointment does not belong in the vocabulary of the spiritually minded. I want to read a scripture to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and let me read from verse 12 to verse 14. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. I like that statement. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual But the natural man, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hmm. We are often blind to our blessings because of carnal considerations. We don't know what we have spiritually because we focus on what we don't have materially. We don't know. We are ignorant. Of what we have. Those, look at what the scripture says here. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Many of us don't identify the extent of our spiritual blessings because our hearts are set on the things of this world. And because we lack spiritual discernments, we are robbed of contentment. This, this is a, a point of reflection. The presence of disappointments reveals the absence of contentment. I'm not saying <laughs> people will not disappoint you. I'm not saying that situations will not disappoint you. But you will not be disappointed because you don't look at things through the lens of Material things, but spiritual. 
There are three enemies of contentment I want you to be careful of. Number one, comparing. Number two, competing. Number three, complaining. Enemies of contentment. If you talk of spiritual blessings that cannot be discerned by material eyes or measured by material things, spiritual blessings, contentment is a gift from God. To be content. But there are enemies of contentment. And these symptoms, uh, comparing yourself with others, competing, you know, running a race in the natural, complaining about what we don't have. <laughs> these are symptoms of a sick heart. Because disappointment is the sickness of the heart. It comes as a consequence of shifting our focus, shifting our attention, shifting our interest from the things of the spirit to the things of the flesh. That's what the devil wants to do. <laughs> he's, a, he's very cunning, crafty. He looks for any opportunity. Try and shift your focus, shift your attention, shift your interest from the things of the spirit to the things of the flesh. But I, look, <laughs> life, life is a, a learning experience. <sighs> if material things are a measure by which we define success, define progress, define growth, define prosperity, just name it. If material things are a measure, let me tell you people of God, you will continue to compare yourself to a standard you can never attain. You will continue to compete for a prize that you can never gain. And you will continue to complain about things you can never obtain. It's an endless cycle. If you're talking of material things being a measure, if that's a measure that we use to determine what we are seeking in this world, you will never find a place of contentment because each step you take thinking you'll get there will reveal another step that shows you haven't. It's just an endless cycle. Endless. It just goes on and on and on. These are things that rob us of contentment. We begin to compare ourselves with others. Do you know why comparison is so destructive so deadly because your comparison is based on what is seen it's based on material things, not spiritual things so when you compare yourself with someone based on what is seen you are wide open to deception because what is seen is often not the reality we often compare based on performance not truth so how, how someone presents themselves, how they look, how they show off for themselves. These are the basis of comparison, but that's not the truth. That's not the reality. So <laughs> we're comparing ourselves to a standard that is unobtainable. And so we're never going to be content. We open the door easily to disappointments. And <laughs> this is a big problem. A big problem people face today. Big problem. Because... I, I'm doing A for God, but I'm expecting it to manifest materially. When it doesn't in the way I expect, I get disappointed. But as Christians, we have to recognize, even though life is uncertain, God is sovereign. The uncertainties of life do not affect the sovereignty of God. He is good. He is in control. And whatever He permits us to face that may look like disappointment is unto our good. That's why we can face disappointments without being disappointed. <sighs> A practical, practical word of advice at this point. A lot of disappointments spring because of the expectations we place on others in relationships. And I think it's important to emphasize it's reasonable to place an expectation on someone when you talk of a relationship. There has to be a basis of mutual trust, mutual love, mutual understanding that forms a framework that the relationship moves forward. 
There's nothing wrong with that. It's reasonable to place an expectation on someone. But it's very unreasonable to hold them to the same standard as God. The problem we have is that we place others on a pedestal that belongs to God alone. That is why we are disappointed when someone disappoints us. Because we have held them to a standard that should only be held to God. My hope is not in man's word. My hope is in God's word. My hope is not in man's promise. My hope is in God's promise. So if man promises, I expect them to fulfill. But if they don't, it will not derail me spiritually. I I hope you follow (laughs) what I'm saying, people of God. Yes, we place an expectation on someone. Yes, I'm expecting you to do what is right. But ultimately, I'm governed by the principle that I love everyone. But trust is reserved for God alone. If I place man's word on, on the same level as God's word, I can easily find myself falling into disappointment. And you know the danger of being disappointed is that you easily mishandle, mismanage your situation when your heart is in such a state. This is the problem. I just wanted to share this with you today because I think it's a very common trap, very common trap that we fall into if care is not taken. Where our focus is diverted. And we can still be doing the right thing, the good thing. Investing in our spiritual life. But then we begin to place a material expectation on that. And when the material expectation is not met and we get disappointed, maybe it will dilute our our commitment. You say, oh, well, I'm I'm doing this for God and I'm facing this. So in that case, let me (laughs) let, 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 let me stop reading my Bible. Let me stop praying. Let me stop supporting the ministry because why am I facing this? That's the danger of being disappointed. It misleads you to take actions that now later affect your life negatively. So, this is my encouragement to you, people of God. To conclude this short word, the more, the more carnally minded you are, the less content you become. If you examine your life today and you study these symptoms, complaining about what I don't have, comparing myself with others, (laughs) competing, running a race in the natural, if you study these symptoms, check your heart. Check your heart. It takes spiritual discernment to recognize spiritual blessings. And those spiritual blessings cannot be measured materially. God is spirit. Don't fall into the trap of only placing material expectations on your spiritual service. I'm not saying God will not bless you materially. He is God. He knows what is good for you. If you can manage that, he will bless you with it. If you can be a good steward of it, he will equip you with it. But that is not the framework upon which we must build our lives. It's not, well, I'm materially prosperous, so God is backing me up. It's about spiritual prosperity relationship with God and there are no shortcuts when it comes to relationship with God the more sanctified we are by his spirits the more satisfied we are in his presence we need more of God (laughs) more of his word less of us this is the encouragement for everyone today people of God how to face Disappointments without being disappointed, okay? And I pray that this word has planted a seed that will continue to grow and grow as you water it with with rightful focus and meditation.